I have to sit and I think for a minute. Give esteem, honor to the Most High Yahweh, where Yahusha Hamashiach, our Savior and King. I want y'all to go to Proverbs 28 and 1. Proverbs 28.1. It says, The wicked flee when no man pursue, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Now, the reason why I sit back and look at that, right? Everybody, you know, likes to mention this, you know, read this verse for very odd different reasons, right? But the righteous flee, I mean, the, the righteous don't flee. They're bold as a lion. You know, a lion don't back down for nobody, right? But he said, The wicked get missing, and nobody chase them. I want you to sit back and look at 1 John chapter 3 and about verse 19. Let's go back to what I'm sitting back talking about. It. If you're out of pocket, it's going to be a fearful thing in you. Make it 18. 1 John 3 and 18. And it says, my little children. Let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Hold this right here. This is what he's sitting back telling you. Just bear with me trying to work. So look at Isaiah 28 and about 15. He said, don't you love in, in, in word and in tongue? I'm sorry, 29 and 13. Make it 29 and 10. Yes, Yahoo 29 and 10. Listen to what he tell you. For you who have poured out a ruach of deep sleep and have closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. Because see what I was talking about this last night, right? Nigga just sit back and think anybody can go in this book and pull stuff out. And this man sat back and told me, boy, I covered your eyes so you can't even see this stuff. That's why he say, open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy Torah. That's why I say the master came to open the eyes of the blind. Well, he can't open the eyes of the blind when you say you see. So therefore your sin remains. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver one to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray that he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. So you sitting at somebody who's supposed to know the law, all you got to do is go back and look at Paul. Paul was a learned man, but yet at a time the book was sealed to him. He couldn't see Mashiach. You got people who's supposed to be learning this word, right? Can't see him. The vision sealed. The vision ain't nothing but a prophecy. Testimony of Yahushua is what? The Ruach of prophecy. It's sealed to him. He's saying the book is delivered unto him that is not learned. He said, saying, read this, I pray thee. He said, I am not learned. Wherefore, Yahuwah said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. So he said, right, this, that's why he tell you, don't let it be in deed and in, 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 uh, in tongue and in word, but deed and in truth, because your heart really ain't with me because you saying that you love me, but you really don't. You know what I'm saying? And your, and your reverence and respect for me, you really doing what men say do, because these men are giving you the doctrines that you want to hear. You following doctrines of devils. You know what I'm saying? Come on back to 1 John chapter 3. All you got to sit back and look at it, Eve. You know what I'm saying? What happened? Her heart was removed far from it. She went right after her covetedness, her desire. He said, for if our heart condemn us, Elohim is greater than our hearts and know all things. But if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards Elohim. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 6. Remember that he said he know your heart. He said if your heart condemns, it's Elohim greater than your heart. He said, but if your heart don't condemn you, I mean if your mind don't condemn you, you can step to the man then. Look at Revelation 6 and 15. Then Genesis chapter 3 and about 9. Probably about 7 though. And the kings of the rats and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to stand? Now these men hearts condemned them. That's why they hid themselves. You know what I'm saying? 
Now we have to get to the point is why is our hearts condemning us? Because we're not believing and we're not obedient. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at Genesis chapter 3. Though. I told you, what son run away from his father? Bear sheet 3 and 7. Genesis 3 and 7. And the eyes of them were both open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. Yahuwah Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, and I was afraid, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He was afraid. Well, why was he afraid? Well, let's look at Bereshit sheet 2 and 15 and let's just see why he would be afraid. Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him into the garden to eat and to dress it and to keep it. Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat of it, thou shalt surely die. So he was given a direct instruction, right? It said he was afraid. He disobedient. Now, hold on now. Let's just come back to Hebrews 3 real fast. Well, I worked the point that's in my head. Now, we're not going to sit here and say that, oh, Adam just was a wicked individual, but the work was wicked. So, he, the wicked flee when no man pursued. Nobody wasn't chasing him. Y'all wasn't chasing him. Yet he fled. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was not chasing him. He just walking in the garden, cool of the day. Out of where yet? I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? He said, why did you flee? I was afraid. Well, what you were afraid for? My heart condemned me. Why did your heart condemn you? Hebrews 3 and 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living Elohim. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. This is why I'm sitting here telling y'all, you see your brother sinning or doing something and you don't say nothing, you know they heart is going to get hard, they heart going to get hard to sin, to their own destruction. You know how wicked you got to be? Well, they seem happy. Everything going to be all right. You watching them kill themselves. The books say warn them. You ain't going to say nothing. Shoot. That ain't my place. That's wicked. When the books say, rebuke thy neighbor, don't suffer no sin upon, that mean warn them. Warn them. The way you going ain't right. That's destruction in your pathway. Now, once you done warn them and they don't want to listen, you good. That don't mean you got to preach no word to them. You got to let you, you know what you're doing ain't right, right? You know what I'm saying? You know that ain't right. You know you, you, you know you're playing with your life, man. You need to tighten up. You know what I'm saying? How you don't say nothing? Man, sin can harden your heart so fast. That's why he said if you commit sin, you even live in it. It'll harden your heart so fast. You ain't careful. 10 and 26 of this same epistle. Now remember now, it said Adam was afraid. It said Adam was afraid. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall desire the adversary. Why do you think he was looking scared? Why do you think he was scared? A fearful look of fiery indignation, the wicked flee when no man pursued. That's why these people came back and said, here come the lamb, hide us from him. They scared, they heart done condemned. I can't approach this man, I'm filthy. My nakedness appear. That's why I got this to cover up my sin. Well, you know what that is? That's sitting back and looking at, they tried to hide in the garden, hide in darkness to cover their sin. I didn't want my sin to be seen. You know what I'm saying? Come over here, what that is, Job? Job 34. Let me see if that's Job 34. Job 
Job, that's praise y'all, Job 34. We'll pick it up about about 16, I say. Job 34 and 16. If thou, if now thou has understanding, hear this and hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hate right govern? And will thou condemn him that is most just? Mm, mm, mm. See, the reason why I took it this way, because it was in my mind for I actually picked it verse. I'm going to work that Moses thing in we were talking about, right? Now, we're going to sit back and look at that statement in Job 34. He says, should you hate them that are right, that, are, uh, that hate right, and condemn them that are most just? You know what I'm saying? You know that's what a lot of our people problem is. We will condemn them that are upright. And we'll cleave, and we'll rather take to ourselves wicked men. Don't you know the book say, boy, the just is an abomination to the unjust and the unjust an abomination to the just? We'll just sit back and look at a sinner ought to be a, a, an offense to you. We'll read the verse because I keep mentioning it to you, but we don't read it. I want y'all to see it for yourself. So when you see it for yourself, you won't know, you'll know I ain't make it up. Let me sit back and look at this here, right? We look at the word for just, right? That means lawful and righteous and conduct and character. Justified and, and vindicated by Elohim. Well, the just live by what, gentlemen? They faith, right? So let's sit back here by hate and write that governor. Let's look at govern right here. It's kabosh, right? It means to tie, to bind, to bind on, bind up, saddle, restrain, bandage, govern. To be bound up. So it say even he that hate right govern? Even he that hate right bounds up or heals? Will you condemn the most just? Hold this Job 34, right? And look at Sunday Psalms 105, if I'm not mistaken. Then we could get Proverbs 29 and 29, since I mentioned that there before I even let that slide. We don't want to let that one slide. That ain't Psalms 105. Psalms 105, where is it at? My apologies, y'all. It's Psalms 103. I do it every single time. Psalms 103, verse 2. Make it one. Because y'all need to remember this here. This is what he tell you. Baruch Yahuwah, O my Nephash, and all that is within me. Baruch is Kadesh's name. Baruch Yahuwah, O my Nephash, and forget not all his benefits. You see what he said? He said, lest the evil heart of unbelief come in you to, to cause you to depart from the living Elohim will exhort one another. Let your heart be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You need to turn around and, and make people don't forget the man benefits now. This is why you preach Yahusha first, because then they hear the benefits of what the man came to do. They don't get the benefits of salvation from hearing the law and hearing the Yashara. You don't hear the benefits of Yahuwah in that. What benefits you hear in that? You preach Yahusha, you get the benefit, you hear the benefit, right? That's what we here today for. Because today for the benefits of his name was manifested. The Ruach HaKadesh. Because he told him what? Repent and be baptized in the name of who? So you might receive the gift of, for the remission of sins and receive the gift of what? The benefits. Because what Yahushua name mean? The benefits. You know what I'm saying? That's what people need. You, in order to help a hopeless people, you got to bring them hope. Knowing you, Yahshua, don't bring you no hope. Knowing the Torah don't bring you no hope. Knowing Yahushua HaMashiach bring you hope. And hope is what? The evidence of things hoped for, the things not seen. You know what I'm saying? That's your faith. He said, who is he that overcome the world? But he that believed that Yahushua is the son of Elohim. This is the victory, even our faith. That's your hope. You know what I'm talking about? That's why people need to hear. You're not going to overcome the world by knowing the Torah. You're not going to overcome the world with that. He told you, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. You're not going to overcome the world knowing you, Yashua. You're not going to overcome the world with that. But you can overcome the world with the son, though. Because the son will reveal the father to you. When the son revealed the father to you because the father allowed the son to reveal himself to you, then you can take on his mind and character and become him and walk in that Torah, in that pride of knowing you are the seed of Yashua, or the seed of Abraham, or whatever tribe you are part of. Whether it's Issachar, uh, Benjamin, Judah, Levi, you know what I'm talking about? Zebulon, don't make no difference. You know what I'm talking about? That's when you can sit back. That's why Paul say, he say, shoot, you want to steam in your flesh? Shoot me even the more, nigga. I'm from the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin, nigga, Hebrew of the Hebrews, nigga, what is you saying? 
Don't get it twisted, because I ain't running around here screaming and hollering, nigga. Don't get it twisted. I rap that all day, every day. I just don't esteem in it. I would rather let my esteem be in Yahusha Hamashiach, but don't get it twisted. Because I am of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. I am of bring And tell your mammy if she ain't know. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're supposed to be proud of it, but you ain't supposed to let that, but that pride of it, you the chosen people, where you glorying in your flesh. Ain't no need for that. Let your esteem be in him who brought the benefits. Because look what he came to bring. Who forgive all thine iniquities. You see the benefit? Who heal all thy diseases. Well, what we just sitting back looking at, right? He that binds up. That's what that word government, kibosh, to bind up. What is he binding up? He told you in Jeremiah, you ain't got no mollifying ointment. Ain't nobody come to bind you up. So I'll come and do it. This man come to heal you from these sins and diseases. What, what disease come to your mind that we've been talking about recently, right? Leprosy. Leprosy is a symbolic of death. I come to heal you from that. He said, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Well, come on over here and look at this crown then. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 1. We come right back to Job. Come look at your crown then. We already read it last night, Baruch to them, or yesterday afternoon, Baruch to them that had tore temptation, for they received a crown of life, with the master has promised to them that love him. I have not seen nor ear have heard what Elohim have prepared for those that love him. Those, that's the benefit. If you get a crown, guess what that make you? And now we can work in what Kira asked about too, and we, I can work all that praise y'all. So what we holding, right? Proverbs 29 and 29. Job 34 and 16. Get Leviticus 6 and 27. And Revelation 5 and 9. We're going to Revelation about 3 right here, about verse 3. I just quote Paul on the other. I'll just swing around up to it. 3 and 3. Listen to what he say. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. Hold fast and repent. You heard know what he said? Remember what you heard. Did he say don't forget his benefits? Remember what you heard. Hold it tight. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come unto, on thee as a thief. Thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in sergeants, which have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Abba and before his Malachim. Who that war just asked me about that name? About that? That was you. By the names being written, that was you. Oh. No, I think you don't understand about uh, Somebody said something to me yesterday about names being written. Oh, oh, that's what it was. I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. Praise y'all. You just brought it to me. I don't know. It was either you or you. Somebody did it, but it just came. Praise y'all. I got it in a minute. Just be patient with it. It just came. So he says, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Ruach saith unto the houses. And to the Malachim of the house in Philadelphia, right? These things say he that is Kadesh, he that is true, he that had the key of Daoud, he that opened and no man shut, and shut and no man opened. I know thy works, and behold, I've set before thee an open door that no man can shut, for thou hast a little strength, and thou hast kept my word, and thou hast not denied my name. He say they profess that they know Elohim, but in works they deny him, being disobedient to every good work reprobate. Do not deny the man's name. How do you deny the man's name? Because when you don't baruch the man's name from your soul, you'll forget his benefits. You'll forget what the man did for you. You'll forget how filthy, nasty, and disgusting you were. You'll forget that he delivered you from the corruption of the world through lust. And you'll take your stupid, idiotic, evil behind right back to it and, 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 and destroy yourself worse than what you was when you started. You know what I'm saying? And you know where that come from? Because we'll sit there and watch niggas downward spiral and you don't want to say nothing. Now, screw a nigga feelings. You know what I'm talking about? If a nigga feelings get hurt to get his saves, if they soul saved, then let their feelings be hurt. You know what I'm saying? We too worry about people feelings. What about that feeling of fire? You gonna feel with them because you sat there and watched them do it because you sent it. You don't believe me? Go read Leviticus 19 and 16. He said, don't suffer no sin upon your neighbor. Reprove thy neighbor. That's why he said, exhort him while it's called today. Don't sit there and watch that. 
Then you'll turn around and say you love them. How, how is that possible? Tell a nigga tighten up or don't bring your wicked butt around me. You gonna be shamed. Maybe you might repent. Drop down about verse 12 though. He said, Behold, I come quickly, hold fast thou was that, that that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. The man said he crowned you with love and kindness and tender mercies. How does he crown you with love and kindness and tender mercies? It's from the love of Hamashiach. Greater love had no man in this that a man do what? And he therefore showed the mercy of Elohim by offering up his son that you might have life. Don't you know the book say, he that believe on the son of Elohim is not condemned. He that believe not is condemned already. That's why you got to bring the son. That's what frees you from the condemnation. You know what I'm saying? He's saying this is the condemnation, that men love darkness rather than light. See, that's the thing. That's why, that's why Adam was condemned in the garden. He's sitting there hiding. What is he hiding? And he's hiding in darkness. Because he don't want his deeds to be reproved because Elohim is light and no part darkness. And light makes manifest. So when Elohim is walking through the garden, that's why he fears. That's why the wicked flee when nobody's chasing him. Because my sin going to be made manifest. I don't want to face it. I don't want to face my iniquity. I'm scared. I know I'm going to hell. That's why niggas fear for their soul. Because you won't come to the light. Adam could have came to the light and his deeds could have been made manifest. They were in Elohim. But because his deeds were in darkness, he ran from the light. We have to consider that and don't follow that same pattern of behavior. The man trying to show you something. You know what I'm saying? Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. Therefore, a crown is laid up for me, right? Don't let no man take your crown. That's why he said, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Evil communications corrupt good manners. He said, I speak this to your shame. This is what he's telling them. I'm shaming you niggas. He say something, I have not the knowledge of Elohim. I speak this to your shame. You ain't ought to be proud to be hanging with sinners. Ain't no encouragement in that. You don't get no prayer. I'm not, I'm not tapping you on your back. You doing wrong. You ought to be shamed. We don't think about that. Because, oh, well, you know, they trying hard. Ain't no sin greater than the other. Nigga, get your wicked butt out of here with that. You know what I'm saying? That ain't cool. That's not what this is about. That means you know what happens in that? I'll be comfortable being a sinner. I'll be comfortable doing wrong. That man say, I speak this to your shame. That means you know the word of Elohim and you hang with sinners? You ought to be shamed. You ought to be shamed. That's what shows us how we steal. That's how we know we the house of Yasharal. We got a horse for here. We refuse to be ashamed. Come on back over here to Job, uh, Job though. I don't want to get in Psalms 103 too deep. We'll be here all night. 34 and 17, right? Y'all know the 18 is where we at because y'all know they condemn the most just, right? We're going to turn around and tie that to Moses as a similar to them condemning the most just because he was the most just at that time. You know what I'm saying? And it went ill with him because of the people that got him condemned because of their rebellion. The same way it went ill with the master because of their rebellion. Uh, I mean, at the at the time amongst his brethren, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he got condemned. You know what I'm saying? See, I had something to sit back and think. See, I was going to work with Joseph on a, a prophet's not without amongst his own house and his own kin. Because his own people didn't accept him. But when he went to some strangers, they loved him. They loved him. When he went to them Egyptians, they loved him. They wanted to hear everything he had to say. He said, man, you sit here. My, he said, boy, everybody got to answer. He is not ruling over his own people. That go to show you it's the same. It ain't no different. In congregations all across the world, it ain't no different. Boy, the people of Yasharal, man, they don't respect and honor the prophets that son unto them. It's the same way. You know how wicked these people is? But they had a prophet and they said, give us a murderer. I'd rather take a sinner over a just man. And we still do that right now. Y'all know people who do this. You know what I'm saying? They'll pick a sin over a just man every time. Showing you, you Yasharah. Because prophets not without honor amongst their own people. But if they were calling the master amongst his own people, they called him a blaspheme and a devil. He walked up on them Gentiles. They say, oh, son of Daoud, have mercy on me. They loved him. 
They loved him. That's why he turned around and say, I'm sought for by people that ain't even called by my name. I stretched out my hand all the day long to a gang saying people are contentious, rebellious, stiff necked, wicked, stubborn, hard hearted, disrespectful, disobedient, unbelieving people. That's why I say, you can tell them you Yasharal, tell them the truth though. Tell them how wicked they is. Tell them how unbelieving they are. Tell them how stubborn they are. So they might be shamed. You know what I'm saying? So they don't turn around and exemplify and show that same behavior that their forefathers did. Just let them know so they ought to be shamed. Because Leviticus 26 tell you repent for your sins and the sins of your father. Because you ought to know. Niggas like to cover that part up though. You feel me? They don't want to talk about how Benjamin was around here chasing booty. They don't want to talk about how you was around here idol worshiping. They don't want to talk about how they lined up at troops at the harlot's house and how every man neighed at his neighbor's wife. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about how you had your back to the temple worshiping the sun. You know what I'm talking about? You don't want to talk about how you let your children pass through the fire of Molech. You don't want to talk about how these people were complaining as they were crossing the Red Sea. We don't want to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to talk about that. Tell them that they ought to be shamed. He said, because he don't do this for our sake. He do this for his Kadesh name's sake. Y'all got my name dirty out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? I got to clean my name up messing with this old rankly no good home. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it said. You out here hoeing, you got, y'all know what I'm talking about. Nigga be with a chick, boy, she sleeping with everybody. That man name getting dragged through the mud in the street. Because of you. You know what I'm saying? So he got to sit back and say, boy, I got to get up here and get my name back right in these streets. Nigga around here down talking my name. Because of you. That's why I say we were clowning about it, but the most I really did what baby did. Put some respect on my name. He really said that in his book. Put some respect on my name. You know what I'm saying? And he said it like, and he said, and I ain't gonna say it no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might sound funny when it hit my mind one day, like what baby said out of his mouth. Yeah. He really did. And he really said what baby said out of his mouth. He said, I could have pulled up on you, but I thought that was gangster. So I came and came and met you to your face. Face to face. He said, any man that inquired after me and he got idols in his heart, he said, don't let that man go to the prophet. He said, I, y'all will answer that man to his face. Because if you go into the prophet, he like, he said, I could have pulled up on you. He said, I ain't going to pull up on you. I'm going to come to you like a man. He said, I'm going to repay my enemies to their face. He said, I'm going to come to you and meet you in your face like a man. Let me take my glasses off so you can look me in my eyes. Like what that nigga said, he might have came in on some other type time, mm -hmm. but scripturally, everything that man said out of his mouth, this man actually said to us. Mm -hmm. Except for the last part, are y'all finished or y'all done? He just said, y'all finished and you're done. Mm -hmm. He asked no question. He let you know you finished and you done. You know what I'm saying? That's something to consider. You feel me? That's something to consider. That the, your own Allahim told you, you need to put some respect on my name. Hello? Hello? Put some respect on my name. You feel me? Job 34 and 17. I mean 18, right? We're in 18, right? Is it fit to say to a king, thou art wicked, and the princes, you are ungodly? Did they not call that man wicked? Did they not call that man a blasphemer? Did they not call that man a devil? And he's saying if they call the master of the house be as above, what you think they're going to call him of his household? Mm. And if they call the master of the house be as above, guess who they really call be as above? <sighs> How much less to him that accept not the persons of princes, nor regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die. And the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. Now it wasn't midnight when the man was on the tree when he was taken away. Put him on the state wind at noontime right it went dark so guess what it would make? Midnight. And he was taken away without hand because he said you couldn't have no power against me except Elohim gave it to you from Shamahim. You can't do nothing to me. He said what? He said I, I told him it's like it's what I was telling the brother last night. 
And I'm going to reiterate this again. If you're not laying your life down to sin, if you're not sacrificing your life to not sin right now, you will not sacrifice your life when it comes time to literally die. I don't care what now one of you niggas say. You will not convince me of that. If you are not willing to lay your life down to not sin, you will not die for this word. Because what did the master say? No man take my life. I lay it down to myself. And my father give me power to pick it up again. So if you lay down your life for Hamashiach, ain't nobody took your life. You laid it down on your own accord for his name's sake. That means he going to give you power to pick it up again. You know what I'm talking about? What I told him last night, you can't kill something already dead. If you dead in Mashiach, can't nobody kill you. You get killed because you already dead. That's why you're going to flee. Because the wicked flee when no man pursue it. You're going to do just like Adam. You're going to hide in the darkness to cover yourself up when Elohim come and make light manifest of your wickedness. That's where that fearful look of the fire in the nation come. I'm scared. I'm scared. I know you're scared. You said it. That's why you ran. That's book. You know what I'm saying? We wonder why Adam was afraid. You know why he was afraid? He willfully sinned. He think the man finna come knock his whole dome loose. Verse 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man. He see all his goings. Hold on. You know how his eyes is upon? Let me, let me look at something. Because I was looking at something about this here the other day. <coughs> he said his eyes are on the ways of man, right? How y'all think his eyes are on the ways of man? He see all your going. How you think that man see what, he, what you doing? He said, I am. The eye, the physical eye, mental or spiritual faculties, also a spring or a fountain. That's interesting. He said he sees all your goings. Well, let's look at goings. It's Saud, it's your step, your pace, your stride, your course of life. He see what you're doing now. Well, let's see how his eyes see what you're doing. Second Chronicles 16 and 19. Revelation chapter 2, I want to say. Probably about verse 16. I'll see when I get around that though. You just hold it, Joel 34 though. We're going a whole different direction. We might not even get to that thing what me and Troy were talking about. Because we're working somewhere else. That's 16 and 9, because there ain't no 19 in that. So my apologies. 16 and 9. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Listen what he say, man. For the eyes of Yahuwah run to and fro throughout the earth. The whole of wrath to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Therefore thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Now we talked about that recently. You sit back, you do foolishly, that man going to cause you to have wars in your inward part. That means you're going to war against the flesh. You're going to war against the adversary. Remember how we read the other day? He said, I'm going to give uh, these two men over, uh, uh, Hennius and Stephanus, uh, get him over to Satan so they might not learn how to blaspheme. From now on, you're going to have some wars. I'm going to give you over to them. You're going to have a problem on your hands. You know what I'm saying? That you might learn not to be blaspheming. That you might not learn to be stupid. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say they've erred. They haven't known my ways. But see now, what do y'all think these eyes are that's running to and fro throughout the whole earth? What y'all think them eyes is that's running through the earth? The Malachim. Come on over to Revelation chapter 2. You should remember that from, from Lot. Who did he send down there to see what was going on inside of Sodom and Gomorrah? Two Malachim. And why did he send two Malachim? Two or three witnesses. I can't take you out with the witness of one. I need two or three. What is it, Revelation 2 and 17? Or is it Revelation 3 and 1? We'll look at 2 and 17 for the start and then work our way around. We still hold in Revelation 6, I mean Leviticus 6 and 27 and Revelation 5 and 7 or 5 and 9. You know, his eyes is going through. He's seeing everything that's going on. Because remember, Yahuwah don't, uh, Yahuwah don't come off his throne. Remember, he said the eyes of Yahuwah are over the righteous, right? Don't you know when Psalms 91, he tell you his Malachim give charge over thee? You know what I'm saying? All that make me think about, bro, and whether niggas believe it or not, quite frankly, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I told some of y'all about it, that one day I had a rage in me. You know what I'm saying? Like the first person would have tried me. 
I probably done killed him with my bare hands. That's how angry I was. You know what I'm saying? And I could hear son say, y'all stop it. He got evil in his heart. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know that's not coming from me. Because when I heard it, I stopped dead in my tracks. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoa. All righty then. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm going to go home. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up. You know what I'm saying? Because that took me aback. And that's real because they weren't lying. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was evil in the nigga mind. Like, boy, first nigga tried me, boy. They done. I wouldn't get who it was. Nigga, shoot. But I was still depressed. So this was like March. You know what I'm saying? Late March. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, straight up, I wouldn't care who it was. Look wrong, glance wrong, brushed up against me wrong, whatever. You was going to catch it. You know what I'm talking about? And I ain't no violent dude like that. I don't even think of operate like that. You know what I'm saying? That's when I realized that that depression ain't no joke. That thing can make you be totally opposite of who you actually are. But to sit back and you hear that, y'all stop it. He got evil in his heart. And now all I'm thinking about is Psalm 91. Like, yeah, man. We can read Psalm 91 if you want to see it. You know what I'm talking about? This man really say he give Malachim charge over you. If you belong to him, they with you. You wonder why sometimes you be in certain situations and stuff don't happen? Because he got Malachim watching over you. You got to remember that. How Shaitan tried the master with that. If you be the son of Allah, he ain't jump up off this head. He said he won't call your Malachim, won't cause your foot to crash up against the stone. How Shaitan know that he is all protected? That's why he say those that are born of Allah, do not commit sin and the wicked one touch them not. They can't get to him. You got to sit back and remember that. What did he say about Job? You got a hedge and a fence. Take it away. I bet I can get it. Those that are, he say Job was a perfect and upright man who would shoot evil. That means he was born out of him. He sinned not. The wicked one couldn't touch it. Man, you, I can sit back and look at, boom. You know what? I can sit back and now that I sit back and say that, I can look at my situation, man, what I was going through and dealing with. Because Hashitan ain't never been able to run up on me the whole time I've been doing this here. Y'all let him do it. Because like I told you, that depression went away too fast. He let him do it. You know what I'm saying? He like to say, I bet I can get him to do this here. I bet he'll do this here. And he was coming too. I didn't tell you no lie. He was coming. He just stood firm. I'm feeling just like Joe. Man, you should let me die in my mama's womb. You might as well go ahead and take me out right now. I'm ready to go. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna curse this man's name though. And I definitely ain't finna go commit no sin. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna do none of that. I'd rather die first. You know what I'm saying? Feeling just like how Joe felt. Boy, you done left me now. What, what, what reason do I have to be here? I might as well go ahead and get it over with. You know what I'm saying? Now when y'all say, okay, now we got to pull him back. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all don't realize that that if you know the book of Joe, you know y'all like, might let the man come at you. But he already know that one going to stand firm anyway. That one they're going to fold. 2 and 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, 17, 17, yeah, 17. Not 13, 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Oh, I'm sorry, Revelation 1, I'm sorry. He said, I am he that lived and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, so be it. And I have the keys of Sheol and death. Write the things that thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The seven stars which thou saw in my right hand are the seven golden candlesticks, and the seven stars are the malachim of the seven houses, and the seven candlesticks which thou saw are the seven houses. So you look at Revelation 3 and 1, look what the man tell you. He say unto the Malachim of the house and sergeants, right? These things say of he that have the seven ruachs of Elohim and the seven stars, and I know thy works, that thou hast a name, and that thou live and art dead. So just sit back and look at it. He got the seven stars. He just told you the stars are the Malachim, right? They eyes is running to and fro in the earth to show them so, so y'all can show himself strong in those whose heart is perfect, who, whose mind is complete in him. You know what I'm saying? Your mind only com com comes complete in him through faith in Mashiach. That's what we have to turn around and look at. Now, we also looking at something about the wicked fleeing with no man pursuit. But then we also looking at how the righteous are bold and can approach. Sons will approach to the throne. You know what I'm saying? Look at Psalms 91, what we were talking about. You know, this is a lot of Christians' favorite verse. Christians love this one. Psalms 
Psalm 91. What the best verse we want to hear? Psalms 91. We pick it up by the. I say by verse four. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that waste in noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his Malachim charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now you know what that go to? To keep you in all your ways. What did he tell him in the Torah when it come to that? He said, I send my Malachim before thee to lead you in the way. Don't provoke him, because he will not pardon your sin, for my name is in him. You know what I'm saying? All this is sitting back looking. I'm finna look at something that's on that one real fast. For one of the words. That just stood out to me real fast. Oh, this is sitting right there, scripture. That's where you got it from. When you look at it's a sabah for charge. It means to charge, give orders. Over and appoint. So they've been given orders to watch over you. So I say his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth, showing itself strong in behalf of those whose mind is complete towards him. That means he'll send Malachim to watch over you. They've been given a com you know the white folks love to say, your guardian angel. They steal it from us and then they make it, they make it idolatrous. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't like what they talking about. And then obviously to keep thee in all thy ways, the way, the road, your manner of life. So that Malachim is there to keep you in the way, just like the law say. But don't rebel against him, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when thoughts come to your head about not to do something or to do something, that's that Malachim putting that in your head. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't Yah himself. It's the Malachim that's delivering the message. You know what I'm saying? He letting you know which way to go to keep you in the way. But you know what some of you niggas do? You don't listen. You get outside the way. Yeah, but that Malachim is there watching you. He just said he'll keep you in the way. Now come back on here to Matthew chapter 3 to see what he said. So guess what that means? If there's a Malachim watching over you, that means you ought to be, say you, you, could, you conform to be, become a son. You're a part of the Alahim family. He just ain't silly Malachim out with everybody. He said those who made the most high their refuge and their habitation, dwell in me and I in you, and you'll bring forth much fruit. That's for the obedient, for the faithful. For the righteous, so they can be bold as a. You know how bold you got to be to say 10,000 fall at your right hand, 1,000 at your left? You don't feel no plague come to your house. Nothing come up close to you. That's boldness. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 4 and 5. Say, then the devil take him up to the, into the Kadesh city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he saith unto him, If thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his Malachim charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou should dash thy foot against the stone. Yahushua said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt Yahuwah Elohim. You don't do stuff to sit. That's why I'm sitting back looking at it. I hear Yah stop it. He got evil in his heart. He ain't got to worry about me tempting him and trying him to go do something because you let me know right now you need to go home. Because your mind definitely ain't right. That's what it's sitting back showing you, even though you might have to work. We men subject to like passion. You know what he could have did? Knowing I got evil in my heart and put me in a situation where that could happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Knowing that this ain't what you want to do, but right now you ain't in your right mind. You really tripping right now. You know what I'm saying? And this, and this man had enough mercy to let me hear that. Like, yeah, you need to stop it. Because when I hear that, I already know it. I do that in my heart. I'm finna go get home and drink me some water and do something. I'm finna go back in the house. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously that's not on my mind, but I'm just knowing if a nigga blink wrong. You know what I'm saying? But you know what could have happened if I would have had a firearm? Nigga could have got murdered. 
Like it wouldn't have been no talk. Just bum bum bum. And walked off like I ain't did nothing. In broad daylight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no killer. I'm only gonna kill somebody in self-defense. My life got to feel threatened. Or those who I'm with, who I care for, they life got to be threatened. I will murder a nigga with no hesitation. I ain't gonna think twice about it. You know what I'm saying? You try to kill me, kill mine, and I can do something about it, I'm gonna murder you. With no problem. That ain't really murder, that really killing, that really just self-defense with no problem. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna come kill me and mine and I got a firearm on me and I don't pull it out and blow your brains out on the concrete. Straight up and down. Especially not no Gentile. Because he took that Egyptian out. When he seen two Hebrew fight each other, he said, man, why y'all do that? Y'all tripping. He had no problem sitting back. And then y'all already know, all that symbolizing is is killing the devil. Yeah. Killing sin, killing death. Mm -hmm. Egyptian, bondage. Who got power over bondage? Death. Who got power over death? The devil. What lead to bondage? Sin. He said, I came to destroy the works of the That's why the son of Elohim was manifested. That's why Moses was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy Pharaoh. All the way around. Too many different ways. That's why I say when that dude came at, uh, at your man, when he did here, I say, man, I would have crashed that nigga, man, because your video was weak. Dude, we know, man, the video you did, man, remember that nigga came at him all? Oh, yeah. Video was weak. Yeah. The information wasn't wrong, but it was weak. It was standard, regular stuff that niggas is ready for that they can come back. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say preach Yahusha and shut these wicked men's mouth. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. Where we at now? Let me finish this Job 34. What that is, man? That's how you know his eyes are upon the ways of man and his goings. Let me look and see what goings is. I think we already looked at it. Your manner of life, your course, the way you're going. You know what I'm saying? That man sitting back, he watching you. He know what you're doing now. Don't think the man don't know where you're going and what you're doing. That's how he able to give you to a reprobate mind. This man king shooting throughout the whole earth, testifying. Cause, yeah, because Hashatan already accusing you. They running through the earth to see what the lick read. And y'all around here giving them ammunition. Mm -hmm. Professing the name of Yahuwah. Professing the name of Yahusha. Giving them much ammunition. You know what I'm saying? We can't get it. You got y'all don't really realize, man. This man really, really sits at the throne accusing people. Go to Revelation 5 and 5. Then I work this Revelation 5 and said well, through 9 what I wanted. And we just like, this man really, really does, though. This man really does sit around accusing us all day long. You have to sit back and I'll put it to you like this here. You get in a situation and you see yourself thinking wrong or doing wrong or affiliated with wrong. You best believe that Hashatan was sitting there saying, Abba, y'all, if you put them in this position, I guarantee they'll do this. And when you do it, that's how you know that y'all ain't stamped it. Y'all ain't, you ain't supposed to be in that. You ain't supposed to be around that because you were put in a position because Satan's felt like you'll do this if you get put in a position. I'm trying to tell you. If you know his ways, you'll know that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say what happened like what, what, what went down last, we already know, like boom, he already know. Boy, I bet he get angry and snap right here. You know what I'm saying? I bet he do this. He can't get a chance to do that again. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all he do is accuse. See, y'all look at somebody, oh, oh, y'all don't realize there is a, a, a ruach, a spirit in the earth that walk around pointing fingers at you, telling Elohim, I bet they will do this if this happens. You know what I'm saying? And if you find yourself in positions where you're doing something outside his way, in positions that you ain't never been put in before, you better believe that Hashatan went to this man and said you would do this and you done showed him to be right. You know what that'll cause you to weigh out and consider? The direction and the course that you're going. Five and five. 
One of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, this is Revelation. The line of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of Daoud, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders. Come on, man. Man, Uber, what that nonsense. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, this is what he said, and seven eyes, which are the seven ruachs of Elohim sent forth into all the earth. That's his eyes. So now I know some people are, he got to have seven spirits to see everything that's going on. That's what he want to do, nigga. That's what he want to do. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, but he, I mean, that's what a revelation, but that's talking about like the spirit of understanding and wisdom. But he also letting you know, I got seven ruachs or them seven stars because a Malachim is a, ain't nothing but a ruach and they watch it. And they eyes are over the righteous and they go through to and throw throughout the earth to sow themselves strong on the behalf of those who heart is perfect towards me because my eyes are upon your ways and goings. Why do you think he say, let us go down and see what they doing there? Because yeah. I'm going to send y'all through there. I'm not going through there to see about it. Yeah. Allah, he ain't going to come down in the earth and do that. Because mm -hmm. if I come down here, I got to kill all y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I send y'all around here. Y'all don't realize this Malachi watching what you doing. They reporting back too. Like, yeah, that nigga's wicked, father. That one there's a soldier. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said his eyes are over the righteous. His Malachi are over the righteous. What? Come on, man. The master about to die and what, who popped up? Gave him strength. When they came to the sepulcher, who was sitting there? Over the righteous. You know what I'm saying? Watching over. Keep them in their ways and their goings. You know what I'm saying? The people sit back and realize they don't, because people don't want to believe that. I don't believe y'all said that to you. Or I don't believe y'all with you. I don't believe no, okay, you ain't got to believe it. The book sit there telling you that. It's for the righteous. What make you righteous? He that believe on me as the scripture have said. That undying, unwavering amuna, that strength, that conviction, that firmness in the word of Elohim. That's where it comes from. That's the root of it. That's what people lack. That's why they don't have no power. That's why they can't resist sin. That's why they can't, they can't get the rule out. That's why they had all these issues and all these problems. Because you don't sincerely believe from the heart. And I can't do nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? Only you can. You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing about it. The people sitting in this room can't do nothing. Darius can't do nothing for Stanley, and Stanley can't do nothing for Darius. All you can do is to give him exhortation and encouragement and iron sharpen iron. You know what I'm saying? Because most people believe, but their faith be weak or it be small. You know what I'm saying? Some don't believe at all. Because we know that from John 6 and 66. Them people stopped walking with it. Because they didn't believe at all. You know what I'm saying? Peter said, well, we're going to go at it. You got the words of eternal life. Then sit back and look at it. They thought the master was crazy. They thought he was retarded. They thought he was a devil. They say, I'm getting away from this nigga. I can't get no word from him. Peter looking like, shoo, bet I don't go nowhere. What was that was in Mark chapter 9. Young man, uh, man uh, with his daughter. And he said, you believe I can do this? He said, all things are possible to them that believe. He said, master, help me die with my unbelief. About Mark about 9 and 23 start rounding up. You know what I'm saying? But you got to remember that all things are possible to him that believe. Ain't nothing possible to him that don't believe. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He shall receive nothing of you. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to get, he that doubteth is damned. This is, and all, I'm mentioning all this stuff and whether y'all don't realize it or not. It's showing you the behavior of a bastard and it's showing you the behavior of a son. Because a father watch over his sons and nothing can touch them. You know what I'm saying? I don't care nothing about them. It ain't none of my children anyway. Tell your daddy. It ain't your daddy. We all got one creator, but we don't have the same arbiter. You know what I'm saying? And I don't care if they're the seed of Yasharal or not. I don't care if they say they believe the word or not. I don't care if they say this is what they want to do or not. He say you shall know them by what? They fruit. The fruit of your doing show you're not of Yahuwah. You are a sinner. Therefore, Hashatan is the father. Basically, you're going to get some old Maury Povich. You say, Yahuwah is your father? 
You know what I'm talking about? The results say he's not the father. No, he's going to sit back and open that thing up. Yahuwah, you are not the father. Mm. Well, who like, and then you're going to be running off the stage. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Hashatan is the father. Mm. Just to sit there to put it like that, because that's what you're going to be doing when you stand before this man in the day of judgment. Out of there. Out of there. Five, five and seven. He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. I might be able to work in what me and Troy were talking about. I got time. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the Kadeshim. You see that there, them golden vials of odors? You see that again when we were talking about that prayer of incense? That sweet smelling savor? They got vials of odors. They got, they sitting there looking at, you got to remember, man, the prayers of the Kadeshim are sweet smell to the Most High. That's why he says his eyes are upon the righteous and their ears are open to their prayers. And then you actually see a Malachim taking your prayers and taking it to him. In, in, in that context, how you reading it? It's like they grab the prayer and take it to Mashiach. Mashiach take it to Abba. You're like, yeah, we can handle that for him. You know what I'm saying? And they sung a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to Elohim by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our Elohim kings and priests, and we shall reign on the rest. So you know what I'm telling you? I've given you a crown which no man can take. My blood has made you a king. That book is the book of life. You said you took the book. No, nah, that book is this book. Like we already read, take it to somebody and read it to me. Say I can't have sealed. Mm -hmm. Couldn't nobody unseal this book but the master. Make known, uh, yeah, couldn't nobody else do it. Nobody knew what this book was talking about to this man resurrected from the dead. Then he said he started at the Torah of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms and expounded unto them the things concerning himself. You got to remember the people, what is this talking about? 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 Nobody knows. Yeah, he said seal the book. It's not for you to know. Seven seals is just the seven ruach. Pull these things off. Make it complete. Now you can know. The work is finished. You look at that something sealed up. What did he tell you what he sealed the book up with? I put a spirit of deep sleep on you. So guess what? No knowledge, no wisdom, no understanding, no fear of Yahuwah, no none of that. You were absent of all of that. You ain't had none of that. Till this man came and pulled them seals off. Ha! 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 Now you can open up the book. Now you can understand it and be saved. He said, no man know the father save the son, and no man know the son save the father, and to whomsoever the father will reveal him. Come over here to Job 34. Let me finish that. We'll grab Leviticus 6 and 27 right after this. And we still hold in Proverbs 29 and 29. We'll get Proverbs 29 and 29 before Leviticus 6 and 27 so I can knock that out before I forget it. 29 and 29. Well, we got Job 34 and 21, 22. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where workers of iniquity may hide themselves. It wasn't nowhere Adam could hide. And it ain't nowhere them people who can sit back to my hiders from the face of the Lamb. And it ain't nowhere you gonna hide from what you out here doing. You can't hide. Light make manifest. It would be better for you to stand up and take the shame of co uh, confessing your sin or your sin being exposed than to try to hide in darkness and y'all kill you. Like how retarded must we be to sit back and realize I'm going the wrong way. Let me turn myself. Let me extricate myself from damnation. 29 and 29. Proverbs. Twenty-nine and twenty-seven. I just knew it was at the end. Make it twenty-three, though. He said, "A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble and ruach." See that pride, and you want to commit sin and not repent. That's why he say having a whore forehead. It's gonna bring you to the grave. 
He said, whoso is a partner with the thief hate his own soul. He hear cursing and beray it not. What y'all think that could mean? I'm just reading it because it's on my way down to that. What y'all think that could mean? Then what he say? He that is a partner with the thief hate his own soul. He hear cursing and beray it not. Let me show you something. Beray, the word is Nagad. It means to be conspicuous, tell, to make known, to announce a report, to declare, to make known, to expound. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that means to tell it. Yeah. And they say when he hear cursing, it's a law. It means an oath, the oath of a covenant, a curse from God or from men. So whoso is a partner with the thief, hate his own soul. He hear cursing. And he don't tell it. Any of you gentlemen on this phone got any idea what they're talking about? Don't nobody got no idea what they're talking about? He said he, he, say he that is a partner with the thief hate his own soul. He hear cursing and he don't bread. it. He don't tell it. Go to John chapter 12. Proverbs 4, I want to say. Hold it, Proverbs 29. Twelve and one. Then Yahusha. Six days before Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Yahusha, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Same way the house was filled with the odor of the Kadashim, but that's neither. We're going to keep on going. So then, uh, then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he had the bag and bear that was put therein. So all he was looking for for him to sell it so he could take some of the money. So now you say he that is a partner with a thief hate his own soul, right? So who was partners with this thief? The Pharisees was. And what did they say they want to do? They heard cursing. We want to kill him. And he ain't telling. So now you have to sit back and look at if you a partner with a thief, because he just like he say the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. If you are a partner with a sinner, and you hear these people sitting back going against the righteous or speaking against the righteous, and you don't tell it, you ought to be destroyed with it. Because what happened to Judas? And what happened to the scribes and Pharisees? Let his blood be on our children. children. You worthy of the same reward. That's why he say, remove yourself from among them. Get that evil from amongst you. That's why you sit back look at that boy. You hear evil, he say to tell it. Come on by. Proverbs 29. So guess what that means? If you're a partner with a thief, you hate your own soul. It means you hate life. It means you hate Mashiach. That's Proverbs chapter 8. He that hate me hate life and love death. You're a partner with a sinner. You hate yourself. The fear of man, this is verse 25. The fear of man bring a snare. But whoso put his trust in Yahuwah shall be safe. That's why niggas be falling because they fear man rather than Elohim. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment come from Yahuwah. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. That's why the man sat back and tell you it's always going to be discrepancies between the serpent seed and the woman seed. You can't be lukewarm. A just man, an unrighteous man is going to hate a righteous man. He's going to be offended by him. And a righteous man will be offended by an unrighteous man. Come on over here to Leviticus 6 and 27.
and it says, Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be Kadesh, and, with the, where, and when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the Kadesh place. The reason why we're looking at this is Kira asked about the word for blood. Now we already looked at how we would be sanctified by his blood to be made kings. So let me look this word up. For blood in this verse, because that's the verse she says she took it from. And this, uh, so I don't want nobody to think I'm around here cussing. It's dumb. And this is the word for blood. We got two characters, right? The dollar and the mean, right? Uh, what the dollar is, that's the door, right? If I'm not mistaken. And then the uh, mean would be blood. So this is the door that allows you to enter into blood. Now we know the master shed his blood. Mm -hmm. He shed his blood for what purpose? Remember now, he healed all your diseases. So what are, and, and are the benefits, so what are the benefits? So his blood is to do what? To sanctify you. But guess what else his blood is to do? To purge your conscience from dead works. To enjoin you to the covenant. To be able to make you a son. You know what I'm saying? The whole objective of what, I, what we're supposed to be doing is to become a son. Now, I went through all that to do this. Psalms 106. So we just sit back and look at it. It's the blood that opens the door. And it's the blood that he spilled that would be able to allow him to die, which allowed him to be resurrected, which allows you to walk through the door. Once you're allowed to walk through the door by his blood, then you're able to become a part of the house. And how are you able to become a part of the house? Because you get see Hold on. Let me find that first. Before we look at Psalm 106, let me find that first. Before I forget. And I'm going to pull this word up. To, uh, Psalms 139 first and about verse 12 we've dealt with Psalms 139 before but now we're going to deal with it a little different I want to pull the word up though Psalms 139 and 12 but I'm pulling this word up Yea, the darkness she said yea the darkness hide not from thee but the night shine as the day the darkness and the light are both alike to thee but thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made Marvelous are thy works that, that, that my soul know right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. He said he was curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Now let's look at something when he say curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. I said we dealt with this before. Sun should be coming to your mind though. We're going to look at curiously, right? See what the word is we have for that. It's rakam. It means to mix colors, to skillfully wrought or woven. How was he curiously or woven in the lower parts of the earth? And made in secret. When he was brought back to life. Absolutely. Because look what he said. The word is sadar or sather for secret, covering, shelter, hiding place, covering, cover, hiding place, secret place. What did, what did Adam and Eve seek to do? They sought to try to cover themselves with a fig leaf or to cover their sins. You know what I'm saying? Now we turn around and look at the master. We coming back and what are we seeking to do through him? Cover our sins. Why? Because of the blood. The blood allows you to enter into the door. When you enter into the door, you are covered. We already read his eyes are upon those. He gives his malachine charge over them who trust in him who have made them a habitation. You see what I'm saying? So... Let's look at verse 16, because that's what we came up with. He said, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book 
all my members were written, which were in continuance, were fashioned, when yet, as yet, there was none of them. Now, what do y'all think that could mean? Say, your eyes did see my substance being unperfect. You saw my substance being unperfect, meaning an embryo or a fetus. Let me tell you what that word is. It is golem, and it means embryo or fetus for substance being unperfect. Then he's saying, in thy book, so we know that's the, the safar, the book, the document, the writing, the legal document, deed of purchase. This is deed of purchase. So when we look at safar, uh, 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 Stanley, you got three characters. What characters you think you would have? Obviously, I think, of, huh? Well, court might be. So you got to divide, separation. So my separation by my word. Separated by my word by the firstborn. All my members are written in what well, my substance being on purpose, my fetuses or my embryo or my seed has been separated by the word of the firstborn. This is going back to Pentecost now because the word of the firstborn is what separated them 3,000 men. And what it caused that separation to come? The blood that caused you to, or the dumb that caused you to walk through the doorway. Now listen to the next thing he say. All my members were written. And that is kathal. It means to write, to record, to inscribe, to engrave, to register, to enroll, to record. He say which were in continuance. I'm sorry. I had the wrong thing. Which are in continuance. Which is yom, which just means day, time, year. So that means they're in the day. Sons of the day or children of the light. Just follow where I'm going. And he said, when as yet, as yet there was none of them. So he said, when yet there was none of them. And all we got there was fashion. So we have yet sar, which is a form, fashion, and frame, divine activity. Hold on. To predetermine, to preordain. <laughs> so this is going back to what we've been talking about for weeks. Some people are meant to be saved. Some people are meant to be damned. Hold on, so when he said what is yet was none of them, we have a card. One. So you know what this go back to? Sitting all this here, once we put all this together and break all this down, like I probably I ain't gonna try to sneak that firstborn atonement money. And I can try to can, but I gotta see how I can do it. Cause I gotta get Psalms 106 in. I want y'all to sit back and think about something. John chapter 17, holds 139. So when we look at this verse of 16, we see the Substance, you know what I'm saying? In the book, all my members were written. So basically, the word, the separated word of the firstborn of those who were predetermined that are one with me. They all written in my book. Look at John 17. Yeah, John 17. Make sure I got the page in here. John chapter 17 and verse 6. Because remember he said, Father, you gave thee, gave me them and thine they words and mine they are, right? He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were and thou gave them me and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. And we know further down, then you say to make them perfect in one. Now let's go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, because the first thing you spit to sit back and look at is, is John chapter 10. He said, you're not of my sheep as I have told you, because all my sheep been written out in my book. All my members. Get Ephesians 5 and 25, go along with it. All my members. They've been predetermined, preordained. 
Why do you think the Apostle Paul write about people already picked the salvation? It's already in the it's already in the Torah, it's in the language, it's in the book, it's in the law, it's in the Tanakh, it's there. Four even grew. Four even grew. That's mine. That's why he said this is the generation of the thing in Shamahim and Arats. You look at generation, that's the line of a family. You got those that are written in the rats or written in the earth, and you got those that are written in Shamahim. Man had already told you. The stars you see up there, that's some of us. You look at stars, that's some of us. You already written up here. And we try to get people written somewhere where y'all ain't got them written at. Ooh. What I just asked for? 12, yeah, I appreciate it. First Corinthians chapter 12, right? By verse 12. He said, for as the body is one, ain't that what we just heard? He called, right? And have many members, because my members are written in that book. You think this man really talking about his body being written in a book? His literal arm, legs, and feet? He said, and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Mashiach. For by one Ruach we are all immersed into one body, whether we be Yahudim or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink into one Ruach. Hold on now. So guess what it takes us back to, what we've been talking about, which we're going to see, that's how he worked that song, 106, see, that's how I know he want me to do it, because all it is, that take us back to the waters of strife at Kadesh. And you sit back and look at it, the strife at separation, which is pointing us to the back that you're going to have strife. That's why he say, since you've done foolish, you'll have wars. If you're going to do foolishly, you're going to always have that strife to fight against the flesh and sin. If you do walk up rightly, you can be able to overcome it by the Ruach. Don't mean you can't overcome it because you've done foolishly. But that battle is going to be, might be a tad bit more difficult. No, that's in Numbers chapter 20. We talked about that, what, Wednesday or Friday? Friday. Where we at now? For the, for the body is not one member but many. That's why he say my members are written in the book. If the foot shall say because I'm not the hand. Now we good right now. Drop down to 20 though. Matter of fact, we don't need no more of that. That just really got the gist of it. Ephesians 5 and 25. Because all we sitting back going to show now, we'll read Ephesians 1 and 4 after 5 and 25. All we sitting back to look to show is, got to get another book. Is that some of us were written the salvation in the book before the book was before the world was even made? Because that's what we get for Psalm 139, right? So some were chosen to be sons by the blood. I want to get that atonement money now. It's real decent. I mean, I gotta work and work quick. Ephesians 5 and 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Mashiach also loved the body and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself an esteemed house, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be Kadesh without blemish. And we can sit back and look at it. Didn't you see how he said after that blood came on there, they had to wash that garment so it could be without blemish? And how did man blood wash away your transgression and your sins, that you might not forget his name and remember all his benefits because he heals your diseases? So men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He that love his wife love himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it even as the master of the, the body. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So those who have been immersed into the death of Mashiach are members of his body. So if you know that you're dealing with somebody who's been immersed into the death of Mashiach and they're a part of his body and you don't love another member of your body to tell them not to sin, they're going the wrong way. It's just, do you not even realize that it's something that y'all would even allow you to be immersed in the man's death? You know what I'm saying? He said, he that believeth in immersed shall be saved. So if you got the opportunity to be placed in this man's death, walk accordingly. Because he said right after that, but he that believe not shall be damned. He ain't even mentioned no immersion. You know what I'm saying? He said, you don't believe, you're going to hell. And that's going straight from the law. Because guess what? Those that believed and walked through that Red Sea, they were saved. 
Those that didn't believe in the wilderness or the sin, they died. They died. That's why it pays no law. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how much you read this book, boy. We already read Isaiah 29. If he shut your eyes to it, you're not going to know it. It don't matter how much you sit there to it. If you don't want to, if you don't believe it, he'll close your heart. You won't get it. Whew. Revelation chapter thir uh, 13. We did all that just to do this. 13 and 8. I'll come back to Ephesians 1 and 16. I'll even get Ephesians 1 and 4 because I feel like it. And all that dwell upon the rat shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. And they shall, and all that dwell upon their rat shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. And all that dwell upon their rat shall worship him whose names are not written in the, in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. Now, Telehe 139 is already showing you that people's names are already written in the book. He said, while he was being formed curiously in the lower parts of the earth, my members were already written in his book and they won with me. That means you're going to serve the man. That means when you see people out here walking contrary and they ain't even really believe, nigga, you walking with the devil. That means this nigga going to serve the beast and you going to serve him with it. Because your name ain't written in the book. Revelation 20 and 12, man. Your name ain't written in the book. People name already written in the book. That's why you see the master writing in the dust when the people came up. Your name written in the earth, man. You done. Revelation chapter, I mean Isaiah chapter 4 say, everybody whose names is written in Jerusalem shall be Kadesh. Everybody whose name written in Shamahim gonna be set apart, gonna be a Kadeshim. Say his eyes is over them. Twenty and twelve. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. And if your name ain't written, in, and he say the land was slain from the foundation of the world, which means the book was written from the foundation of the world. Malachi say he wrote a book of remembrance for everybody that thought upon his name and who feared Yahuwah. He say, oh, who are you to reply against Elohim? So the thing that formed, say the thing that formed it, why have thou made me thus? Maybe if he wanted to make his power known that he had vessels fitted for mercy and vessels fitted for wrath that you might know his power. For this cause he raised Pharaoh up in thee, I shall make my power known. Y'all trying to make this man put somebody's name in a book that he ain't never had in it. Ephesians 1 and 4. Which is showing you the separation of what we were talking about yesterday, right? The tree of life, uh, the, uh, uh, the tree of the field is a man's life, and the tree that don't give forth fruit of uh, meat, cut it down. You know what I'm saying? Serpent seed, woman seed, wheat, tares. Who sowed the tares? The devil. He got a seed. His seed is not formed in the lower parts of the earth. But you know this is also showing again all my members written in the book while my body is formed in the lower parts of the earth. Resurrection, immersion. There is immersion again. Because for him to be formed in the lower parts of the earth and then you to be immersed in his death would make you a part of his body. Which makes you a part, we'll get Galatians 3 and 26 to back that up. Make you a part of his body, which makes you a part of his members, which makes your names written in the book. Which was going to make you a what? Son, because you'll be what? Firstborn or first fruit. Because the dead and Mashiach, what? Rise first. First fruits. I'm coming to get that. I need that. Because it's harvest time. I need the first ripe fruit. Do we think about that? Do we ponder upon that? Do we consider that? Or are we going to continue to walk in outright utter disobedience? outright unbelief it's a lot of times man I'm telling you I'm sitting here telling you we just don't really believe at the end of the day we just don't really believe 
And that's why we don't get where we want. That's why we don't get what we want to get where we want. You know what I'm saying? When is that mind and heart of faith going to develop that we can literally become? Because you know what son is right, right? That's what it was. It was Jeremiah 24 that I was looking at yesterday. And I couldn't remember. And it just popped back around there, right? I'm going to look at the Hebrew word for right before we actually go around there to that, to that verse. And it's literally first right fig, early fig, but the word is bakura for first right. Because you know when something is ripe, right? When you say a fruit is ripe, what are we basically saying? It's ready. Say the, the, say the, the husband has come, his wife has made herself what? Ready. You got to make yourself ready. Make yourself complete. Then you won't be like Adam running, hiding, because you wasn't ready. You ain't got no excuse not to be ready. You're not ready because you don't want to be ready. You know what I'm saying? It's stuff you want to do. That's why you're not ready. What excuse do we have not to be ready? None. Where we was at? Yeah, Ephesians chapter 1. Make it three. Baruch be Elohim and Abba of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, who have baruched us with all Ruach Baruchings and Shamahim and Mashiach, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be Kadeshim without blame before him in love. You already been chosen to be set apart. You already been chosen to love him. That's why they say many are called, few are chosen. Just because they hear the call to come down and sit and hear the word don't mean they chose. Because this man say my members are already written in the book when I was curiously formed in the lower parts of the earth. When I was being woven together and fashioned and sent this vile body to be put on this esteemed body, my people was already picked. Having predesignated us unto the adoption of children by Yahusha HaMashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And that's what we read. He say pre predestined, preordained, pre-chosen. It's according to the goodness of his will. Y'all do what he want to do. If you got a problem that he chose some, he ain't choose somebody you love, take it up with him. See how that work out for you. Who can make crooked? Who can make straight what Elohim done made crooked? Who can give a man a heart to hear the word if y'all ain't gave it to him? Just as easy as he gave you one to hear, and he can take it back from you, which would manifest that you wasn't never his to begin with. Because can't nobody pluck he is out of his hand. If you belong to him, you can't be lost. If you get lost, it's because you were never his. But you know the problem is? No one will tell us this. Now, I know lately for the last few weeks, we've been talking about that a lot because maybe he wants to drill that into your brain that you need to understand that because maybe some of us are chosen. And you need to make sure you make sure your election is sure. Your, 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 your selection, your choosing is concrete. You know what I'm saying? And to let us know that everybody's not his. It's a hard reality, but it is reality. You know what I'm saying? What you want me to do about it? Verse 11. And whom also we have obtained of inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will. That means, say, I recommend my course of action to do what I want to do. And I choose people according to my purpose to get my will done. That what I want done. Not what you want done. That's why the master say, not my will be done, but thy will be done. It don't matter what you want. That we should be the praise of his esteem who first trusted in Mashiach, and whom you also trusted that after he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession. Then we already read by son being purchased. What word that was? That was in Psalm 139 we read by son being purchased, right? Let me pull that word back up. Because I forgot it. You know, I'm old, man. Let's see what that word was for purchase real fast. Psalm 139. Let me get the word out. Y'all bear with me for a moment. You sit back and look at it. Some of y'all, he already bought. 
Now we know that in that word we're looking at that yatzer or yatsar. That is the preordained, the plan, a purpose, a situation. And that is for the word uh and that Psalms 139 that I'm referring to. It's was fashioned. So when you were fashioned, you were already picked. I think it's all my members written. It's Kathab. No, that's the write down or inscribe. So when all my members written, this is showing you how you were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Was it my substance being that unperfect? No, that's the embryo or the fetus or the seed. That's what we hold in Galatians 3 and 26 for. There it is. It's actually the Safar. That means deed of purchase. Deed of purchase. You know what I'm saying? And you know where that sit back and you look at in Exodus chapter 15, how he sat back and said he purchased us with that blood of the lamb. You know what I'm saying? So when you actually look at the book, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and my flesh is meat indeed and he paid and the veil, we say come into the veil, which is to say his flesh or his blood or his body, that's what bought you. That's the deed of purchase. This is the evidence that he bought you. The dollop that allowed, or the dom, or the dollop in the mean, or the door that entered into the blood, the sun is showing you my blood is my deed of purchase that I purchased you. Just like we were talking about yesterday, his blood purchased you that you might be his slave. You got to think about that. That means that's why he saved, and then, he, and then we already read in Revelation 13, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. That means this man's blood already had purchased you. The deed of purchase had already been laid out. But also you see this key thing in Ephesians, you can swing to Galatians 3 and 25. 26 actually. Uh, 